Uh, yeah, thank you uh, all for joining me. Um, yes, my, my talk will be on a nice little result on branch depth in uh, matroids, which is uh, joint work with Kevin Hendry, Dylan Mayhew, and uh, Sang Il Om, um, which we did early this, earlier this year. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me at any point or type something in chat or uh, however you like. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so um, let's start with uh, a brief reminder of tree depth of a graph. So uh, the tree depth of a graph is the minimum height of a rooted forest such that G is the subgraph of its closure. Okay, what did, does that mean again? Okay, what, what's, the, what's the closure? Well, the closure is uh, if we have some, uh, some tree here, then uh, we add all the edges uh, between comparable elements of the tree order. And uh, uh, subgraph, uh, so and if uh, G is the subgraph of uh, such, a, uh, s such a closure, um, and the tree has height t, and that's the smallest for which is the case, that is the tree depth. Um, well known, uh, it is, I guess, quite well known that uh, obstruction for bounded tree depth is our uh, long paths. So what does that mean? So it means that uh, whenever we, uh, uh, so for every n, um, we can find uh, a value for the tree depth, so let's call it D, such that every graph of T, tree depth D will contain a long path, so a path of least length N. And well, let's uh, look at a, an example for some path and uh, the uh, tree that we have here where we can see, so optimally for, for such a path would really be uh, such a tree. So here we see uh, the graph doesn't, uh, so the edges of the tree uh, don't need to be edges of the graph, but, uh, but here we see that the tree really, um, so, the, the, so the, the, we can only squeeze the path a bit into the tree, but uh, if we make the path longer, then we can't really just keep branching the tree, but really need to increase its height. Um, so, and now, uh, whenever we want to uh, generalize such a, a parameter to matroids or uh, other, um, other context, uh, contexts, we of course need to be careful how we do that here in the definition of tree depth. Uh, we talk about vertices, we talk about edges, so no straightforward uh, generalization exists. But uh, yeah, this, the same problem, of course, uh, arose with uh, tree width. And uh, while there, there is some possible other generalizations, one of the um, earlier attempts from Robertson and Seymour was the concept of branch width. So let me remind you of, uh, of the concept of branch width of a matroid. Um, which probably most of you know, but uh, still, let's do it. So we, uh, what do we have? We have a tree, uh, and in this case, a subcubic tree, meaning all the nodes have degree either one or three, as well as a bijection from the ground set of the matroid to the leaves. Um, that's uh, our branch decomposition, and uh, we say a branch decomposition has has width k. Um, if k is the minimum such uh, whenever we look at some edge here, um, then uh, we look at, well, this edge induces a bipartition of the leaves. Uh, so let's look at one of the sides of the bipartitions here marked in blue. Um, and look what value does the connectivity function takes for this set. And uh, this, uh, 
and then the minimum W for which there is a, a tree decomposition of width W, sorry, this M should be a W, um, is the branch width of uh, the matroid. So this definition uh, is, uh, has the nice uh, property that it really works with any type of connectivity function for any uh, combinatorial structure. So we don't need to have matroids and matroid connectivity. We can use just uh, graphs and uh, vertex connectivity, for example, or the cut length function. Uh, and uh, all this definition still makes sense. So, um, so what do we know about the branch width of the matroid? Uh, well, if we look at the graphic matroid, um, the branch width of the uh, graphic matroid M of G and the G tree width of the graph G are tied. So one, uh, one of them is bounded if and only if the other is bounded. Uh, that's also a result by Robertson and Seymour and, uh, well, later Hicks and McMurray and Mazois and Thomas C showed that uh, with uh, some tiny uh, counter examples, uh, they are, uh, the branch width of a, a graphic matroid and the branch width of that graph are actually the same. Okay, so that's branch width. Um, and yeah, one of the, uh, what's, uh, what are the abstractions for bounded branch width? Well, um, of course, there's the famous Robertson and Seymour grid theorem. For every N, there is a W such that every graph of tree with at least W contains, uh, uh, yeah, right. Uh, this is not what I wanted to write. Contains the uh, N by N grid as a minor. And uh, as, uh, as I mentioned before, since tree width of a graph and, uh, uh, and branch width of the graphic matroid are tight, we get as an immediate corollary that uh, for every uh, graphic matroid, so, so for every N there is a W such that every graphic matroid of branch width at least W contains, and here uh, the cycle matroid, Uh, of the n by n grid as a minor. Um, okay, so this is uh, about uh, obstructions for graphic matroids. Can we do more? And uh, the answer is uh, yes. For example, um, matroids representable over a finite field also have a grid theorem. So for every finite field and every n, there is a W that every matroid representable over that field of branch with at least W contains the cycle matroid of the N by N grid as a minor, which is a theorem of Gielen, Gerards, and Whittle. Um, so really grids seem to be the right abstractions, but uh, this has not yet been shown for all matroids as far as I'm aware of but uh, the conjecture for all matroids would be uh, the following conjecture from Johnson, Robertson, and Seymour. For every N, there is a W such that every matroid of branch with W contains a minor isomorphic to either the cycle matroid of the grid, the bicircular matroid of the grid, or a large uniform matroid UN to N as a minor. Sorry to interrupt, I think there should be a Dual, a dual as well for bicircular. Um, that is very well possible, yeah. Um, um, let's fix that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, um, that was my quick reminder of branch width. So um, what's the idea of now the unified uh, framework uh, we could use maybe to define branch depth. Um, so, and this is a definition by DeVos, Quan, and Um. So now instead of, uh, instead of uh, looking at, uh, at uh, uh, 
subcubic tree, so where every node has degree uh, one and uh, three, one or three. Um, we now just look at uh, at some uh, uh, some arbitrary tree. Well, it should have at least one internal node. Uh, what am I drawing here? Okay. Um, again, a bijection to the leaves. And now we measure the width slightly differently. Now we measure the width of some internal node. And how we do we do that? Well, uh, the internal node does uh, partition the leaves uh, by, uh, by looking at its outgoing edges and what's behind there. And uh, these we, uh, it's for these we can form an arbitrary partition of, uh, of the leaves behind of uh, some of these edges and against the others and look at the connectivity uh, function value of that. Um, and across all of these possible partitions, uh, the minimum K uh, such that uh, all of them have the value smaller than K will be the width. Um, and we say the radius of the decomposition is just the radius of the tree. And then we define the branch depth of the matroid as the minimum D again, for which there is a decomposition of width D and radius D. So um, we simultaneously uh, want to control the width and the radius of that tree. Like with branch width here before, um, this uh, definition works for, again, arbitrary connectivity functions. Um, I just stated it here for matroids because I will mostly use it just for matroids. Okay, what do we know here? Well, uh, obviously the branch depth of, uh, of a matroid is at most uh, the, uh, yeah, is at most the branch width of uh, the matroid, um, especially since uh, when we look at uh, branch decomposition uh, here again, um, the width that we get from the edges, we can really mimic by the width that we got from the nodes here by, uh, since, since we're subcubic and we really just get the same numbers here. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, and also, um, if, the, if we look at graphic matroids again, we can, uh, uh, we can calculate that the branch width of a graphic matroid and the tree depth of the graph are tied, well, at least if the graph is uh, three connected. Um, yeah. Okay. So this, uh, this is the definition of branch depth. Um, and now, yeah, well, what could obstructions for that be? And before I get to that, let me make a quick excurs to, uh, to rank depth of graphs and vertex minus. So if we, uh, in the definition of branch width and branch depth, uh, look at, uh, another connectivity function, namely the cut rank function uh, of a graph, uh, then uh, we get the rank depth or, or rank width if we use the definition for width. So uh, what's the cut rank function? Um, well, we, we look at some bipartition of the, of the ground set, uh, so of the vertex set of the graph. Uh, uh, and then the edges really between this bipartition and uh, forget all the other edges. And then we just compute the rank of the uh, adjacent, of the bipartite adjacency matrix uh, that such a, uh, such a cut induces. So we uh, plug, uh, we plug the elements of X on this side of the matrix, the elements of Y on this side, and then compute. So I have a one 
whenever we have an uh, edge and zeros otherwise and compute the rank. Uh, and using this connectivity function instead, uh, we get the concepts of rank width and rank depth, uh, which are both quite uh, useful concepts. So, um, and they are very, uh, uh, quite related to the vertex minor relation. So let me also remind you what the vertex minor relation is. So uh, we have two operations. Uh, first operation is vertex deletion. I guess that's clear. Second operation is local complementation. So whenever we have a vertex V, uh, we look at uh, the neighborhood of V and there we have uh, some edges, some non-edges. Uh, and what do we do? Well, when we do local, local complementation around V, then we change this to uh, where we switch edges to non-edges and non-edges to edges. And then, uh, then rank width and rank depth uh, behave very nicely uh, with that relation. So for example, uh, graphs of bounded rank width are well quasi-ordered under the vertex minor relation and so on. And we can also look at rank depth uh, and find a very nice obstruction for rank depth in this case. Uh, and this is a theorem of uh, Quan, McCarthy, Om, and Wollen. Um, namely, the obstructions for bounded rank depth are uh, vertex minors of long paths. Um, so again, this reminds us of the uh, tree depth, which we talked in the beginning, where we, we had uh, the obstructions were just uh, sub, uh, long paths or subgraphs. Here we have it at verse x minus. Okay, so why did I tell you all of this when we were talking about branch depths of matroids? You may wonder. But, uh, uh, but if we look for a matroid at its fundamental graph, so that is the bipartite graph. Uh, uh, so given a matroid and a base of that matroid, um, we look at the bipartite graph where we, uh, uh, on the ground set of the matroid, where we draw an, an edge between an element of the base and a non-base element, if and only if the base element is on the fundamental circuit of the uh, non-base element with respect to the original base that we had. Um, and this fundamental graph uh, kind of uh, um, takes, takes the role of, uh, um, so the, the operation for vertex minus kind of are quite related to the fundamental graph in some sense. So what do I mean by that? So if we have an edge of the fundamental graph, um, then of course uh, we can just take the symmetric difference with the original base and again get a base of the matroid. And uh, looking at the fundamental graph with respect to that base, um, what we can, uh, we can really obtain this graph by um, by first doing local complementation at uh, one end vertex of the edge, uh, then local complementation of the other, and uh, local complementation of the first again. And uh, this operation we call a uh, pivot uh, on the edge. Uh, uh, this uh, this is, looks uh, maybe a bit intimidating, but it's, it's not really. So, what we do if we have here an edge of the fundamental graph, we can uh, look at the neighbors of u, uh, the common neighbors of u and v, and the neighbors just of v. And uh, what do we do? Well, uh, we had uh, say some edges here between all, uh, all of these. And what does this pivot operation do? 
Well, first of all, it switches the roles of U and V. Um, then uh, it looks kind of like this. So let's say call this set A, B, and C. And here we still have A, B, and C. And between those uh, sets, we flip again adjacencies. So turn adjacencies to non-adjacencies and vice versa. And this is the, the pivot operation. And uh, then it's well known that uh, for binary matroids, um, at least if, uh, so if we have binary matroids M and N and N is connected, um, and the fundamental graph is a pivot minor. So a pivot minor is just like a vertex minor, but now we only do this pivot operation here. Um, uh, then uh, uh, that minor n or its dual is a, uh, that matroid n or its dual is a minor of m. So the fundamental graph uh, really plays well with this pivot operation. And since uh, the, in binary matroids, uh, the connectivity function equals uh, the cut rank function of the fundamental graph, we can apply uh, this uh, theorem about vertex minors here uh, again in this context to get uh, that the obstruction for large branch depth in binary matroids are precisely uh, the uh, matroids which have a fundamental graph isomorphic to long path. Okay. Sorry, how does that work? The vertex um, minors are... Uh, yes, so that... Uh, so how does that work? It, I, I, so basically, um, the, since the fundamental graph is uh, bipartite, um, we can really, uh, uh, what, what was it? I think the, the local complementation there cannot break any, anything. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't quite remember the details, but it wasn't a long proof. Uh, I guess one of the authors, some of the authors are in the audience. Maybe they can, <laughs> can answer. But OK. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, so I wanted to only use this as, uh, as motivation. And uh, so I'm not using this result. Uh, and yeah, so basically the idea here now uh, is, okay, really the fundamental graphs uh, are uh, the, uh, the thing which highlights what our abstractions could be. So long paths and fundamental graphs. Okay, so what does the long path and fundamental graph mean? So for example, which matroid uh, has just uh, a long path as its uh, fundamental graph? And uh, well, for example, uh, let's look at the cycle matroid of the fan graph. So this is the fan graph. And uh, let's pick a base. Let's pick as a base this nice star. So in blue, then we have the non-base. And if we now look, OK, what's the fundamental graph? OK, so we have this fundamental circuit here. So. Uh, so this element here has really, so this element here has really these two neighbors. 
uh, then we have the next next here so we really can carry on like this and again end with and really get get a long path as a minor okay so uh, so if we just take the spa, uh, star as the spanning tree uh, so as the base for the uh, cycle matroid then the fundamental graph is just a path with 2n minus 1 vertices um, and uh, yeah, here we get uh, uh, this uh, then uh, this result. So for every uh, n, there is a d such that every binary matroid of branch depth at least d contains the fan matroid as a minor. So uh, so why is that? Well, for binary matroids, the uh, the fundamental graph really um, uh, fundamental graph really uh, determines the whole matroid. So knowledge about one fundamental graph is uh, enough to know what matroid we have. And uh, then we use the previous observation of Quan, McCarthy, Om, and Wallen about uh, the long path being the obstruction. Okay, and this leads us uh, finally to the conjecture what uh, should be the obstructions in the general case well we definitely uh, have the fan as we just saw for the uh, for the uh, for the binary matroids um, since we know we are bounded by a branch width we also know that well the uniform minor u n to n uh, is a possibility um, but the conjecture is these are the only two obstruction, obstructions and we cannot quite show this conjecture but we managed to prove the following um, for every uh, n and every, every w there is a d such that every matroid of branch depth at least d contains either the fan matroid as a minor or has branch with more than W. So um, in the case that, uh, uh, that we have uh, bounded branch width, uh, or we don't have, uh, so we have bounded branch width, then we really have a fan minor. Um, so the fan matroid is a minor. Or in the case of unbounded branch width, well, if the conjecture of Johnson, Robertson, and Seymour should be true, then we have a large uh, cycle matroid of a grid, by circular matroid of the grid, or dual or uniform matroid. And there we then could also get the full conjecture. So we could reduce that conjecture to the other one. OK. Questions so far? Uh, let me just add that I think that we had this statement in the paper, but it was because we could prove in bipartite graphs uh, that you can actually replace vertex minor by pivot minor. And that was using some other results too. Thank you. Okay. Um, good. So, Again, how so we we did uh, just see about uh, in in binary graphs where we really could use the fundamental graph, uh, and we had these long paths in the fundamental graph, and this is really something that we still want to take advantage of, even if the fundamental graph now does not necessarily uh, determine the the whole matroid. Um, and for this, uh, we look at the concept of twisted matroids. Um, why? 
Why doesn't my slides don't turn over anymore? Hmm? I'm sorry, something seems to have stopped working. Maybe just cancel the share and then turn it on again. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, okay, so so if we look at the uh, the following proposition, so the idea is, so how can we uh, determine now the edges of one fundamental graph with respect to one base, um, and uh, slightly change the base, mainly just doing a base exchange with a single edge of the fundamental graph. Um, and uh, how does the fundamental graph change? Well, uh, here you see uh, three conditions, uh, which are precisely those uh, which I just uh, drew earlier for the pivot along the edge. Well, almost. So again, here the first condition says the roles of, uh, of U and V uh, are exchanged. The second rule says, uh, well, if we have a vertex which is in the neighborhood of neither u, which is not in the neighborhood of u or v, then its neighborhood doesn't change. And uh, if we uh, have a neighbor of u and a neighbor of uh, v, and those are not neighbors of each other, uh, then we add the edge. So for, for the pivot, we also had the other concept um, that uh, if uh, there is an edge, then we remove it. But here uh, in non-binary matroids, this may no longer be true. Um, but as uh, in a paper of Gier and Gerard and Kapoor, they showed if, uh, so when do we, so this, this last missing, uh, step is when we do have an edge between a neighbor of u and a neighbor of v and uh, the graph of these uh, induces a cycle of length four in the fundamental graph um, then uh, we keep the edge x y if and only if um, the symmetric difference of uh, b and all the elements uh, all the elements x, uh, y, u, v uh, is a base of the matroid. So um, once more, uh, the knowledge of the fundamental graph, uh, just the fundamental graph for one base allows us to apply uh, rules one, two, and three. Um, and if we now also would know uh, hyper edges um, of the form x, y, u, v, um, and we know them for the case that the symmetric difference of uh, b with all of those elements together is a base, this is what we would like to call a hyper edge. This would allow us to apply rule four as well. And uh, this is the starting point for the definition of twisted matroids. Um, so what is a twisted matroid? A twisted matroid is a set system um, um, for, uh, for which there is a matroid on the same ground set uh, and a base of that matroid such that, uh, such that this uh, set F is uh, obtained by just taking the symmetric difference of that base B, that fixed base, with all the other bases of the matroid. So it is an instance of a delta matroid in case you know delta matroids. Um, so we write uh, M star B for twisted matroids and call the elements of F feasible. So yeah, this definition is from Guy and Gerard and Kapoor, but it has appeared earlier under different names as far as I know, but uh, we, we use basically this, this version of this concept. 
And uh, we can also describe these things axiomatically. Um, so axiomatically, we want uh, the empty set is feasible whenever we have two feasible sets and an element in their symmetric difference. Then there's another element in the symmetric difference such that uh, their symmetric difference is feasible. And uh, thirdly, we do find a subset of the ground set uh, for which uh, we have, for every feasible set, uh, half of the elements uh, are in the set B and the other half are outside of the set B. So this B really is, uh, has the same role as this B here. So we could feasibly call it a base of the twisted matroid. Okay, so now we uh, keep track of all these uh, feasible elements. Maybe first uh, we can note that, well, if we have the twists, uh, the twisted matroid M twist B, then this is the same twisted matroid as if we would have started with a dual of M and twist with a complement of B. And uh, if the matroid M is connected, then these are really the only matroids which uh, are associated with that twisted matroid in that way that the twist of those matroids with a base really gives us that twisted matroid. If we are not connected, uh, then we can say a similar thing component-wise, but uh, that's uh, not something you need to worry about at this point. And uh, now we can also just def define the fundamental graph of a twisted matroid, namely the, which are namely the feasible sets of size two. And uh, some easy calculations show that this is really, well, it's, a, it's really just the consequence of the definition that then the uh, the fundamental graph of this twisted matroid and the fundamental graph of the matroid with respect to that base are really the same thing. So calling both fundamental graph shouldn't be too confusing. But again, as before here, if we collect the other feasible sets in there as hyper edges, we get, again, all the information of the matroid. Um, where for binary matroids, the edges of size two are enough to determine the whole matroid. In general matroids, that may not be the case. Okay, some other really basic observations. If uh, a set is feasible in M twist B, then uh, again, this is just the definition. So a set is feasible if and only if it's uh, symmetric difference with B is again the base of M. So if we now twist a twisted matroid with a feasible set, um, then this kind of corresponds to base exchange of the original matroid. So, uh, yeah. So this uh, all works very well in the language of delta matroids, if you're familiar with that. Otherwise, I hope that you at least get some impression of this. Okay, so now we have uh, two observations uh, going back to one to Brualdi and the other to Crocdal. So first, if we have a feasible set, uh, so no, if a set is feasible, then the fundamental graph induced on that set has a perfect matching. And Crocdal kind of has a way for the other direction, namely if some, uh, some induced subgraph of the fundamental graph has a unique perfect matching, then the set that we are inducing on is feasible. Um, these two get us as nice and immediate consequences that uh, if we have two matroids on the same ground set, which have a common base, their fundamental graphs are equal, 
and both of them have no cycles, then the matroids are actually the same. Uh, really just a consequence of all the definitions and these two nice statements. And this proposition then allows us to make the following statement. So a matroid has a minor isomorphic to the cycle matroid of the fan, if and only if uh, M has a base such that uh, the fundamental graph of the matroid with respect to that base has an induced path on 2n minus 1 vertices starting and ending in B. So really looking for fan minus is uh, just looking for a base of the matroid for which in the fundamental graph we do have a long path. Okay, so in the paper we, uh, we write everything in this nice language of uh, twisted matroids, um, which makes uh, things really neat to talk about. But uh, now I really, in this talk, this for the scope of this talk, I really just want to concentrate more on the fundamental graph view, even, even though the whole, the, the, the twisted matroids are, will always be in the background. Okay, so what's the very rough idea now of uh, the proof of our main theorem? Well, uh, the rough idea really follows, uh, follows the proof of uh, um, uh, the, the, the proof about the vertex minus uh, and rank uh, obstructions for bounded uh, rank depth. Um, but uh, so if you know that proof, then you uh, can probably recognize most of the elements here. Um, but how does it go? So the rough idea is we recursively try to find a long path in the fundamental graph together with some uh, set of high branch depth, which will allow us to continue the recursive construction. And as the branch width is small, we will then find uh, some set of small connectivity function value, which will then allow us to extend this path. Uh, so that was very rough. Maybe let me sketch this in a bit more detail. And, uh, ah, okay. Uh, and for this, uh, let me make uh, one last definition. Uh, namely the definition of a AB lollipop. So that, that lollipop will be a twisted matroid. Um, you can uh, read the conditions, but what you really should have in mind, the twisted matroid has as its fundamental graph, just a long path S, which ends in some element Z, and then has here some set C, and C has high branch depth. And yeah, it looks kind of like a lollipop, so that's what we call it. And A is the length of the path here, so the, the size of S. Uh, and B is the branch depth of this set C, which uh, we also call the candy of the lollipop. Okay. So the theorem that we uh, then really show is a theorem about twisted matroids. So um, for every A, B, and W, there is a D such that every twisted matroid uh, W of branch width at most W and branch depth at least D has a minor, which is an A, B lollipop. Okay. Um, why does this prove our main theorem? Well, if we look at uh, 2n0 lollipops, um, well, these are just fundamental graphs with a, a path of length 2n plus 1. Um, okay, so the end vertices uh, may not be in the base. Um, and we had the theorem before that we want a path of uh, length 
two n minus one with the end vertices vertices in the base. But yeah, we can just delete the last two elements and then we really get our fan cycle matroid of the fan as a minor. And the proof of this theorem will use induction on A, so the length of the path. And for the induction start, uh, we want to find zero B lollipops in twisted matroid uh, of branch depth, well, B plus two. Um, this is more or less easy, so there is a, so a very, uh, very basic lemma, which just uh, builds on the definitions of these uh, decompositions, uh, that if we have branch depth B, then we find one component, which branch depth B minus one. And in that component, well, let's take any vertex, delete it, and then we have another similar lemma that uh, when we delete it and split into components, well, one of them will have branch depth B minus two. So this is really how the induction start works. And for the induction step, let me draw you a couple of pictures. So what do we want to do? So if we have some nice lollipop here, uh, then what we would like to do is uh, to see that the neighborhood of this end vertex here, this vertex uh, which we called that before, is uh, kind of small. And uh, what do I mean by small? Well, less than the branch width uh, that we prescribe. And uh, then uh, when we delete the vertex in its neighborhood, we would uh, like to find uh, in the candy some uh, smaller candy which still has reasonably high branch depth. So the branch depth doesn't go down by more than uh, W, the bound that we had for the branch width. Because if we have that, then uh, we can take a shortest path from here to here. And uh, since the new candy C prime doesn't uh, so it's doesn't intersect the neighborhood of the old vertex that the path really grew and we will be done. Okay. So how do we manage that? Well, uh, let me draw you, for you some picture of nicely nested lollipops now with square candy. So let's take iteratively many, 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 many lollipops. Um, something like three times the branch width uh, will be okay. Um, and uh, here we see that the, the function that we are really getting as the bound for the branch width is, uh, is quite, uh, quite big in the end, because what do we want to do? So in the candy of the first lollipop, uh, the candy still has high branch uh, width, well, lower than uh, the original graph maybe, but still as far as we, uh, as much as we can prescribe. Um, so we, still find a lollipop in there and in the candy of that we still find another lollipop in there and so on. So uh, all these paths here now have a length a minus one. Right. So these, uh, these we can really then find inductively. Um, and, uh, and yeah, now, uh, now this last candy is the one that we uh, still prescribe as something like at least B plus some reasonable uh, amount of, so like twice the branch width we need extra. Okay. So um, let me slightly redraw that picture now. So let us forget uh, the stems of the lollipop and 
really look at all these uh, these blue vertices, uh, the end vertices here, and the set of uh, so the last candy, um, which which we marked here in red. Um, and now the the uh, bounded branch width uh, allows us to really find a separation here, uh, a small order separation of the matroid, um, such that uh, here we have still a reasonable amount of, uh, of these blue vertices, where reasonable is roughly a third. And, uh, and here we will still have a set of reasonably high branch depth. Um, so this is uh, not a too complicated lemma, which I don't want to go into more details because of time constraints. Um, but uh, this is what the small branch depth uh, allows us to find. So this has, again, a large branch depth. Uh, these are still uh, at least W many and uh, the connectivity here of, uh, of a set here is less than W. So we find a small order separation. Okay, um, so what does that now allows us to find? So let me once more redraw. Uh, so now we have the, the green here and the orange here. Uh, now uh, that's maybe the trickiest part of the proof. Uh, what we now can do is uh, if we contract, uh, so, so we have here, so uh, all of this, uh, as you remember, is all a twisted uh, matroid. So, and uh, really what I drawn is just the fundamental graph with respect to some base. Uh, uh, and what we now can do is take a base, so the, uh, either, so let's say one uh, color class of a proper two coloring of this uh, bipartite graph, and we contract the green elements of that base. And this will allow us to find a circuit uh, using uh, just some green elements here. So this uh, really is just some basic calculations which don't seem too intuitive, but it's not really scary at all. So it's just a half a page proof. Uh, it's just uh, sadly the, uh, the, the thing which uh, I can convey not much intuition about other than just doing the calculations. But uh, we, uh, the point is we really find a small circuit of, again, size less than W. Um, and let me redraw the picture one last time. Um, and now we, we remember that we still had uh, we had the stem of the lollipop. Ah, no, okay. Now for this circuit that we had here, we have one of those uh, green points which the, with the lowest index. Uh, this, this is the green point we look at here. So everything else, uh, so the whole circuit here, did lie here in the candy of that lollipop. So here we had this circuit. Uh, and here we do some some clever base exchange uh, by forcing this small circuit to be a fundamental circuit of, uh, of a base that we pick here on this side so that really the neighborhood of that green vertex is uh, just this circuit. Uh, and here in this orange set, we still have 
uh, high branch depth. So we can really do what we wanted to do in the beginning. And this is roughly how the proof goes and how we will extend the path. Uh, yeah, here uh, as an overview, I have written down the function uh, that we get for you. Uh, so really the induction start was just uh, B plus two as I, as I told you and uh, the here we will have the candies will have a, a, the iteratively branch depth uh, GI here. So the, so we iterate L times. So L is uh, three W minus two. So this is the branch depth that we need for the lowest candy to make the arguments work. Uh, the others are recursively defined by uh, the values for the previous thing and G naught will be then the thing that we need to prove our theorem about lollipops. Okay. Um, so a couple of con concluding remarks. Um, again, uh, as you recall, I uh, reminded you in the beginning about an, uh, the obstructions for representable matroids where we really just had the cycle matroid of a grid. Um, just using uh, this theorem for the large branch width case, we prove the full conjecture of uh, divorce, quan, and om uh, for representable matroids over a finite field. And similar, uh, we can do uh, an argument for quasi graphic matroids. So uh, since the time is uh, almost up, I uh, will not remind you of the definition of quasi-graphic matroids, but as I recall, you had a, like two months ago a talk on this in this seminar anyway, so maybe I don't need to. Um, but yeah, so for this quasi-graphic matroids, uh, we uh, can do it as well. Uh, but here for the proof strategy for the large branch width case, we use the grid theorem of Robertson Seymour for the uh, underlying graph of the quasi graphic matroid and use this uh, grid to either find our fan uh, with balanced cycles or uh, if uh, we cannot do that, well, then we find just a looped path. Uh, so, a looped path really should be something like this. Uh, with cycles uh, in L, so where we had the loose uh, handcuffs, and this will also then correspond to a fan matroid, as a very easy calculation shows. And yeah, and as I uh, said earlier, if the conjecture uh, about mat general matroids of large branch width is true, then this will also imply the full conjecture of the Voskwan and Om with the help of our result. So, but it's, uh, but it should be feasible that, that this conjecture maybe should be easier than the conjecture of Robertson, uh, Johnson, Robertson and Seymour in that uh, we maybe just need to find a, a fan matroid if we don't have a large, uh, uh, large uniform matroid, which I think still is feasible. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? So what do you think of the, the obstructions to the approach that you just mentioned, um, doing it without without assuming the Johnson, Robertson, Seymour conjecture? So, um, so we did have a small hope. So there was in our proof, uh, uh, in our proof, there, there was this, uh, this case where we used the small branch with uh, 
to to find this uh, this small circuit here. And mm. really, what I uh, slightly hit from you, since we had here the choice between two bases, what this really is is either a small circuit or a small co-circuit um, of uh, the original matroid. And maybe if uh, so I, I had one hope, which uh, I couldn't prove or disprove for now, that if we don't find in such a situation a small circuit or a co uh, small co-circuit, maybe we already find a large uniform minor here. But uh, that for now didn't work out. Are there any other questions? Um, oh, okay, there's a conjecture, uh, sorry, a question from Ben Moore. Would the conjecture of DeVos, Quan, and Um imply a non-trivial automorphism group theorem for matroids, like what happens for tree depth and graphs? Uh, that's... Uh, a good question. Uh, I could not keep the whole question in my head and I uh, yeah, do, you, do, do you have a slide with that conjecture on it? Um, DeVos, Quan, and Um? Yes. Uh, it, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, it should be here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the question was, if you had that conjecture, would you have a non-trivial automorphism group theorem for matroids, like what happens for tree depth and graphs are? Um, no, I, I, at least I'm not aware of it. So, we, yeah, so, yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, I, uh, I, one thing I did want to mention as a, as a remark, there is another notion of branch depth of matroids. Uh, which was introduced by Kardosh, uh, Kral, Liebnau, and uh, Mark, uh, where the obstructions uh, are not these fan matroids, but just large circuits. Um, so both uh, concepts are for now called branch depth, I guess. So that's maybe a bit confusing. But uh, yeah, I think they did more... They, they have some algorithmic results on this. While I think for this notion of branch depth, there aren't any yet. I see. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, if not, then thank you again, Pascal. I'll stop the recording now.